Is it easy to switch from being self-employed to a limited company and vice versa? And can you backdate those transactions? So let's start with the second part of that question. Can you backdate? Well, the simple answer to that is no. As I mentioned in the very first episode, when you're self-employed, your business is you and you are your business, but there's no separation. Whereas if you trade through a limited company, what happened when you incorporated that company? So when it was set up, you created a separate legal entity to yourself. And that kind of means that any business activity a limited company has doesn't belong to you. It has to sort of pass through. I always describe it as a bit of a funnel, I suppose, before it reaches you. And for that reason, if your limited company has been trading, you can't then suddenly go, oh, that trade didn't belong to a limited company. It actually belonged to me and sort of vice versa. You can't trade yourself, self-employed, and then go, oh, actually, those transactions belonged to a limited company. I mean, for starters, the limited company would have needed to exist. But again, it's because of that sort of separation. You can sort of move things across. Now, I get asked this most of the time once the first year of trading has been sort of completed and it's normally driven by tax. So if you had um, a limited company and say your profits came in at 10,000, if you'd been self-employed, there would have been a minimal amount of national insurance to pay on that. If you trade through a limited company, there would be corporation tax to pay on it at 19%. So we jump from a difference of, you know, a couple of hundred pound national insurance to nearly 2,000 pounds in corporation tax. And that's when a lot of people sort of maybe panic and start thinking about backdating. So as you know that that option is not on the table, it is worth, you know, really spending the time when you are starting your business to think about what you plan on achieving, whether that's sort of doing a rough cash flow, even just sort of an estimate based upon, you know, uh, finger in the air daily rate or, you know, how many products you expect to sell to give yourself an idea of where you might end up at the year end. So you don't get any sort of surprise tax bills. So the next sort of question is, how easy is it to switch? The first part of that is closing down whatever one you're currently doing. So if you're self-employed, you will need to close that down in order to move over to a limited company. And if you want to trade, you know, if you're a limited company and you then want to trade self-employed, you will need to close down that limited company as well. Both of those are reasonably simple to do. If you are self-employed, it will just be a case of on your next self-assessment, you would tell HMRC the date that the um, the self-employment ceased. And that will sort of close your record off with HMRC. If you trade through a limited company, in terms of closing that down, if you know, if it's just you, there's no sort of debts, no large pieces of equipment. You can just apply to have the company struck off. Obviously, once you've done your, you know, paid the taxes on that, if there's sort of more debts, you may have to go down a liquidation route. But each one, you know, relatively easy is a case of closing down your current one and then sort of moving it across. From your customer's point of view, you will need to let them know that there's been a change in the legal entity. And so if you have sort of ongoing contracts, ongoing retainers, you will need to get them to sign new ones because they are either no longer working with you, they're working with a limited company, or equally, they're no longer working with a limited company, they are working with you. So that can be sort of, you know, a little bit of an admin faff. It may even, if you're midway through a contract, delay when you are able to make that switch. So you may need to you know, work a couple of months to end the contract before a new one is able to be signed. From your expenses point of view, if you have a limited company, obviously you'll be closing down that limited company account. If you are self-employed, you will need to be opening up a limited company account. So it can be a bit of admin in terms of, you know, updating bank details. If you've got things like insurances, then you will need to end your current insurance policy and then restart a new one, either in obviously the new limited company name or in your name personally. What you don't want to do is keep 
the business that you've now closed down insured and not have your current one sort of insured. So neither one, whether it's customers or expenses, is overly complicated to do. It's just kind of recognising that the legal entity is changing one way or another and new contracts and new policies and things like that need to be in place. Then the next thing is the tax. I kind of touched upon this one in my first point, but if you're closing down your self-assessment, you will pay the tax on your self-employment profits in sort of the tax return that relates to that tax year that you're closing that business down. If you're closing down a limited company, you will need to let HMRC know and any corporation tax will need to be paid. So even if you're just striking off a company, you know, if, it, if it's had sort of minimal activity and it's easier to sort of walk away from, the HMRC will expect a final tax return to be sent. So the tax will need to be rounded off. Now, one bit that can be a bit of a sticky point is if you have loans and or if you have large pieces of equipment, because if you have any loans, then the loans will belong to your current business and not your new one. So if you're closing down a limited company to become self-employed, you can't just take that loan with you. You will need to look at what the conditions were of the loan. So if the loan was guaranteed by yourself, it may actually follow you. But if it doesn't, you may need to go through the process of having your limited company officially liquidated. If the loans belong to you as a self-employed person and you're now moving over to a limited company, then obviously the debts belong to you. So the limited company cannot pay those debts for you. So be aware if you need your trading activity to maintain those monthly repayments, those monthly repayments will need to come through your income, whether that's salary or dividends. You can't just transfer the direct debit and have the limited company pay a personal debt off for you. The same kind of with equipment, your new company or your new business will need to purchase those from your old company or business. So you may, you know, if it's sort of laptops, iPads, smaller level of things, probably not sort of necessarily worth doing or having too much of a value, but definitely sort of larger items, you would need to look at that sort of transferring over of the assets. Then to round this episode off, is there a good time switch either way. Now, when I say time, obviously I mean in terms of dates, sometimes people like to keep it to a tax year. So you might make the decision, you know, I'm recording this now in May. You might kind of go, okay, well, I'm in the current tax year. I will just wait until end of March next year, round off the year, then start afresh. Next tax year, I'm going to be either a limited company or self-employed. Now, that can make it easier to have only one sort of type of income in a year, but you do not have to. You can switch whenever you want to. So it may be, you know, if you go back to like the second episode that I have in this podcast series, where I go through the three things that you need to consider when you're making a decision of whether to be self-employed or limited. If one of those suddenly switches, so for example, if you go over or under the point where a limited company becomes tax efficient, you can switch at that point. If your clients suddenly say that they need you to be a limited company, switch to being a limited company at that point. Don't run the risk of not getting any income because you want to wait until the end of the tax year to do so. So I hope that all makes sense. And I hope that answers your question. In summary, yes, it is easy to switch, providing you haven't got lots of equipment or a high level of debt in your business, but you cannot backdate. So you need to sort of choose what you're going to be and then you cannot be the other option until you sort of officially switch over. So that concludes my episodes on whether to be self-employed or a limited company. In the next couple of episodes, we're going to be going through what you should do if you've decided that self-employment is the option that you want to go down to. So the question in my next episode is going to be, I've decided to be self-employed. What do I need to do now? Thank you.